be doing interviews along the way. We'll be looking at different statistics. I, I will tell you that some of the overarching yeah. data that's, that's out there, uh, first of all, AZA accreditation. It's the gold standard of accreditation, not just in the U.S., but globally. So thank you for having an accredited zoo. 242 accredited institutions, and probably 75% or more of those are managed by a 501c3. What percentage? 75% Thanks. or more are managed by a 501c3. Now, additionally, if you take that same entity of accredited, all zoos and aquariums, they are of a public partner, public-private partnership, and publicly operated. Most of those institutions receive public funds. They're uh, maybe on two handfuls. You could count the, the private ones. They get no public funding. There's, they're very few, and they're usually in incredibly philanthropic areas or in tourist destinations. Out of, uh, out of that whole 242 institutions, 95% or more receive public funding. And that public funding is anywhere from about 7% to 50% of total operational costs. Now, we're going to drill down and give you more benchmarking data and more information as the study goes on. But I wanted to give you some high-level numbers and be here to answer any questions that you have. So if you'd like to ask questions now, um, you have to try and answer anything about the process. Uh, this contract and our efforts will be going on through midsummer. Uh, we'll be getting a report to you, and we want the very best for your zoo. We love the mission. Um, I, as I said, I've been in the profession for over 40 years. Uh, we're passionate about it. And we want to make sure we help provide information that's best for your community and for your zoo and for South Carolina. I have one question. Yes. The public um, funding that you just talked about, et cetera, um, the public funding is part of like the national, the federal funding that comes through or what? It's mostly local based and it's okay. dependent on the community. Okay. Yeah, they, in terms of public funding, your, your goal, your, your creme de la creme model is St. Louis. St. Louis gets $25 million in, uh, through a, a cultural attractions district that includes four entities. That's for the downtown zoo. They just passed a, a, another tax for, a, and they have, their, their, they have their own special governance zone, and they've just acquired property on the north side of St. Louis, and they've just passed a sales tax that's going to generate $25 million a year to help operate and develop this property north of the St. Louis Zoo. St. Louis... Uh, is one of those that rings out San Diego, St. Louis, Bronx Zoo. But they're mostly, they're mostly local, and there's different versions. Some come off a of sales tax, some come off of ad valorem. Uh, many come out of the general fund. Some are special bond issue appropriations with city-backed financing. So there's many, many different models out there, and we're going to look at every one of those to see what's best for Greenville. Do, do we know what percentage of public funding that we provide, what, what percentage that amounts to for the zoo? So I don't have a stumble pre, through that one. It, we're looking into the details because we also. I, no, not for you. I didn't know. Oh, Christine did. Yeah, I didn't know if we knew. Or Brandy. What percentage Christine. our funding is. Christine, I'm, they're I'm asking. Memorized, I think it's about 10%. Okay. And so, so the rest comes from ticket sales, memberships, okay. um, uh, gift shop. Concessions, Edition. ticket sales. So about 10%, then not holding you to it, is our line item budget, mm -hmm. the allocation mm -hmm. out of the capital fund. And I think you had it in there. We did. Is 600, 800? 200,000. Oh, okay. I'm thinking of convention. $200,000 subsidy okay. for next year. Okay. Do you have experience with zoos that have transitioned from? It, it sounds like if 75% are, um, I'm just looking at that crack in the window. My gosh, John, is that from the helicopter? Bird. Bird. Okay. Um, if, if we're part of the 25%, right, that, that are AZA accredited but not run by, a, not owned and operated by a 501c3, then over time some must have transitioned from public ownership yeah, yeah. To, to that model. Do you have experience with any of those and are any of those nearby here? Um, yes, to answer your first question. Matter of fact, our managing partner, Rick Biddle, who's also part of this team, um, and Rick, Rick has helped more zoos and aquariums through this process than anybody that I know of. Right? He's, he's, done, he's done the Detroit privatization. He did Dallas's privatization. He's worked on Tucson's and Kathy Hughes. It, it's a long list. I can't name them all. So uh, Rick is... 
he's got the most experience with that. Those that are close by, Chattanooga went through it probably in the last 15 years. So they were owned by the city and they transitioned to 501c3? Yes. And, okay. and what usually happens is the property, it's your asset. This is your zoo. Property stays uh, with the city. And typically your 501c3 kicks it in the gear and raises lots and lots of money. Um, it, it's, and they help build the exhibits and keep your zoo rejuvenated and current and moving towards that world-class. We've talked to many people here in Greenville and they want a world-class zoo from everybody that we've interviewed. Mm -hmm. yeah, and from what we understand on the revenue that your zoo re receives, it comes out of the enterprise fund, uh, the, the cultural enterprise, the hospitality okay. heritage fund. Um, and then um, that is how the mechanism serves the zoo. If I may just do some level setting here, and I'll raise the question, you know, maybe for you, but I think it may be for our city manager, Brandon, but on the front end of this exercise, my, you know, my understanding and to the point of the introduction here is that we're embarking on the evaluation of the optimal governance structure for the zoo. Um, but, but will we also, as part of the scope of this work, receive recommendations on optimal revenue mix to the point of the questions? Are there going to be the equivalent of SWOT analysis provided, like for operations. I guess basically what I'm trying to determine is I fully expect a governance structure recommendation, but they're going to go through our zoo with a proverbial fine tooth comb. So I want to know what all things will come out by design of this thing. The answer is, is yes and yes. We already have a high level SWOT analysis. It'll become more detailed as we gain more information. Um, it's, it's kind of a work in progress. So that will, will be something that we look at. I will tell you, uh, up front, um, your zoo is, you know, they're, they're skinny end of the bell curve in terms, they're, they're raising most of their revenue themselves because I understand the hospitality funds, um, they, they, they help the zoo sometimes. If they're not needed, they roll back into the general fund. Is that correct? Thanks. So, so it's, it's uh, your zoo at, at that 10%, whatever that exact number is, they're doing, they're, they're, they're doing well at, on, on that. Because if you consider 50%, there's probably a bigger conglomeration around 20 25 percent they're getting public funding so when they're, they're not a 10 or whatever that's it's a lower but that that's where we are right now i mean if you look at the last 10 years there's been a big infusion mm -hmm. so it's not okay it's not reasonable to just say okay right now we're at 10 percent because we had a time when we were it's better to look at 10 percent come a long way in the last four years exactly for sure, the zoo, and we do continue to make significant capital investments in the zoo outside of a couple hundred thousand dollars a year in um, operating support mm -hmm. and we've got close to one million dollars right. in the budget this year for additional capital investments mm -hmm. when is the next accreditation process uh, you're going to have uh, they'll be submitting their application next spring and you'll have the boots on the ground inspectors next spring summer and the last one was when? Uh, 2020. 2020 is when we were dealing with it. We got an extension. So it was like 2019, and then we got a year extension. Mm -hmm. I may just voice one, one other thought, if I may. Just, just, a, just a thought, because obviously we've been talking about, we've been talking about eagerly approaching where we're at right now, getting y'all's expertise and helping us evaluate options for quite some time. And I think I've picked up on some slight confusion over time as we've talked about the range of possibilities that we may look at. You know, you know there is, as, as I think you're aware, there's a 501c3 in existence now, but it's the foundation, right? It's, yes. not, it's not necessarily an entity. It's, well, it's clearly not an entity governing the zoo because that's the city of Greenville. Mm -hmm. But I guess my question is, I'll be eager to see, regardless of how this report comes out, what, what continuing role or alternatively what changes, if any, might be there for a nonprofit entity to handle fundraising exclusively in addition to or in relation to any other established entity to do governance? You know, whether that's one and the same, two separate ones, the city continues. But, you know, in summary, some people have said, well, you know, we've already got in place a nonprofit corporation, but they're not doing, they've got a precise and defined role right presently mm -hmm. yeah. so you know with your benchmarking data it'd be, it'd be interesting to see what other places have found what type of success under the same umbrella or with a multitude of entities helping perform different roles and our evaluation will include what they're doing and where they would need to be to assume a bigger role mm -hmm. in this public partner a public private partnership example 
Um, and, and so it's in terms of fundraising, that's huge. Of course, your board, if they look at the management skills necessary, if that's a decision that you all would look at in the future, you need to have the right talent there as well. Everything from legal services to marketing and and uh, and board, most boards have some animal expertise as well. That gives you the, the authentication that what the zoo is doing in terms of animal welfare is great work. Uh, fundraising is key. Um, I, I mentioned earlier that I, I was an executive director of Louisville for 18 years. Our 501, we're a city agency, but our nonprofit arm for a capital campaign would raise anywhere between 70 and, or 90% of a capital project, and those would range from 10 to $30 million. Now, didn't happen overnight. <laughs> it took a lot of board development, getting the right people that knew the right people that had the right resources, and most importantly, uh, appreciate the mission of the zoo. So we will look at that, we'll evaluate on both the fundraising and the management side to make sure we give you an accurate snapshot of where you are today and where you need to be with whatever option you choose. And not to bring up the elephant in the room, and I just said that so I could bring up that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but about 20 years ago, there was conversation about the constraints of 14 acres and can the zoo realistically create a world-class zoo with that kind of constraint of 14 acres? It's a small you don't zoo. have to answer that right now. Right, it, I'll tell you, it, it's a small zoo. I mean, yeah. It's walking the site, they got the challenge of the hillside, which uh, it depends on how you want to define world-class. Yeah. If you want to be um, world-class in... in uh, conserving some of the smallest primate species in the world, because you also have to have the attraction factor. Mm -hmm. um, on a 14 acre site, you're not gonna have elephants or gorillas. Yeah. Uh, so that's something we are looking at, but I could tell you- So there is no elephant in the room. There, well, uh, you, you have some species that you'll need to look forward to. I mean, for example, giraffes are hugely popular. We just built a giraffe feeding platform. Great way to do it. <laughs> if you ever make it to Colorado, visit the Cheyenne Mountain Zoo, they make over $900,000 a year on giraffe feeding. Now, it's, it, and interestingly, they're also, they're not on a hill, they're on with, a mountain. With a couple of giraffes? They have about 15. Okay. So that there's all the rest of these parts of the formula. The short answer is yes, 14 acres limits you. Then you have to decide how you want to be world class. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we'll be available for other questions throughout the process. We work for you. So please, I know you have an agenda day and things to do. There's more questions for me. I'm happy to try and answer them. Um, but... We're, we're here. Uh, they have a new respect for Walter. Mm -hmm. Our giraffe. Is that our giraffe's name? I should know that. Yeah. No, he was Walter. Oh. It's Miss Providence. Yeah, thank you. Know. You're very welcome. Yeah, we look forward to your work. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And again, thank you, so I, I, much. thank you. And thank you for doing this study for you. It's the right right thing to do. Really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. You'll have. Thank you. Awesome. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you all. Thank you. And, and y'all do have a timeline for. Okay. Okay. When do we expect them? When do we? What is that timeline? Uh, it's uh, I think end of July. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, we do have some recommendations from the Accommodations Tax Advisory Committee, and Christina is going to share those with us. Um, I'd just like to invite up Joe Hyman. He's the chair of our committee to uh, share the committee's recommendations with you. We did meet last week to finalize the recommendations after hearing presentations from all the different applicants. Well, I'm not going to talk about giraffes, so it's not as exciting, <laughs> but <clears throat> we do have some really exciting uh, opportunities for travel and tourism coming in 23-24. Uh, so like Christina said, my name is Joe Heinemann. I'm the current chair of the committee. And uh, this year, we looked at, uh, in fiscal year 22-23, which was last, well, this current year, but our last review, we had um, 1950000 awarded in this cycle, and then we had a, another late uh, application come in out of cycle at 10000 uh, from our contingency fund. The amount available for 2023 through 24 uh, was $3 million, uh, so this year we had a total application amount of $3,111,128 that was requested. Mm -hmm. um, the committee used the 2022-23 benchmarking for the baseline for the 23-24 awards. Uh, obviously, we're giving strong consideration to new, diverse, and culturally impactful applicants. Um, and this year, the total awarded amount 
of the three million, we awarded two million seven hundred thirty-five thousand two hundred dollars, and we put two hundred sixty-four thousand eight hundred in the reserve, which was added to the fifty thousand that was currently there for a total of three hundred fourteen thousand eight hundred of contingency funding for available future uh, allowable projects. So this is the the total breakdown, and I believe have they gotten the letter with all the detail. I don't the mem no, the yeah. memorandum. Yeah, okay. Has so there'll be a letter presented as well with all the, the um, a synopsis of each event that, or each applicant rather, and what the funds were wow. utilized for. Uh, but this is the general breakdown. Do we have a copy of this anywhere? The information has been placed in your team. I know I could not get on my teams today. Is, is, you're not Grand, part of the team. Grand Fondo, is that, is there a city? Can I, can I explain a little bit on that yeah, one? Please. Yeah, so um, as everybody knows, when you when you look at, and I'm not, this is, I'm not a part of this. I just, anytime, in my opinion, anytime you look at um, sports activities, it's often a front door to your community for people who may not have come before. So Grand Fondo does occur, it, it is out of, um, the, it's at a place up in Travelers Rest, Vestige or whatever it's called, but the room nights are, downtown Greenville and so they've got world, people from all over the world really that comes in that come in for that okay so what basically my understanding but you might so one other note on that is um, in the presentation they did notify us that they're bringing in upwards of 2300 to 2600 registered participants so all those individuals are coming from all over the world for that specific event they will be needing room nights and there's no way hotel domestique can satisfy nor mm -hmm. could TR so that majority of that's going to be trickling into within the city limits. Okay. Uh, they also have other activities and events prior to or during the event that would be happening with the and city it's, limits. And it's my understanding, too, I'm not a cyclist. I know that surprises everybody. I know exactly. Yeah, I know exactly. Like that. <laughs> but apparently you, you come in at certain levels and you're able to ride with the handicappies of the world. I don't know who these people are, but nor, nor do I. Nor yeah, do I. Hotel. <laughs> but it's they're a very, very big deal. So what you get are a lot of people from all over the world who will say, "Hey, I'm going to spend twenty grand yeah. for a sponsorship and be able to ride with these my heroes or who you know whatever." And then, oh by the way, I'm going to spend the weekend in Greenville. Okay. The the visit. Not that I'm advocating. I just know. I'm sorry. I'm impressed. I'd love to. The, the visit Greenville is that um, does that include the required funding, or is that in addition to our required funding? That does not include the required funding. Okay, so and what's, what's our required funding right now in the new budget? The required funding? Yep. Um, it was about a million three, Councilman, but we'll, we'll have to pull the numbers and we'll have I, I, I that was it. So yeah, with this, so I mean, 122, I, I can't do the math. So. That's a lot for Visit Greenville. Um, just We're still about a third of their budget. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. okay. And they're about six, they're above six now, I'm sure. So it's, it's what, um, and of course, to the point that this has just been made available earlier today. So like, like my colleague, John, I haven't seen it other than this presentation. Are you showing us the awards or the, the totality of this? Meaning is there a collection of individuals beyond this sheet that didn't get anything, I'm assuming? No, we awarded every applicant. Okay. Uh, we did not, you know, typically what we do is we, like I said, we benchmark based on the previous year. This year we had a significant uh, addition in the amount of funding that was available. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> to be proactive, we did not fund all of it. We wanted to keep some in contingency, but, uh, you know, there was only 111,000 over what we had that was requested. So yeah. we went through and we prioritized based on several factors, one of which is some of these events and or groups uh, apply year over year. And mm -hmm. technically there is a three-year limit, uh, but we have the ability to waive that three-year limit if we feel like it has significant value and impact to travel and tourism. So like the artist spheres of the world, Euphoria, those types of um, mm -hmm. events. So we give them a percentage uh, based on, you know, we kind of look at what they got last year, what their ask was for this year, because we all understand costs have gone up significantly. So 
we try to keep that into consideration as well so they continue to perform. Um, and then we do have some new applicants who we try to fund uh, in a way that we think is most beneficial to the initiation of their, um, their event or activity. But typically the newer ones are a little bit more nominal asks because mm -hmm. um, they haven't been, uh, you know, they're, they're kind of new in this process. I mean, just um, a quick scan, it looks like, looks like quick scan, nobody got any worse off than 95% of their ask. Uh, um, excuse me, excuse me, then of their ask, but most everybody seems to have gotten the same or more than the previous cycle. Than, than last year, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, significantly more. Like, look at MAC was 475 yes, last MAC year. Yes, MAC definitely came in at a much higher uh, mm -hmm. amount than years previous. Uh, and so that was one that we took into consideration and had good discussion around. And we, we felt like prioritizing some of the other asks before giving them the, the total 750 that they requested. Um, yeah. But yes, I would say generally, you know, we try to fund uh, as much as is possible uh, based on their application too. The one thing uh, we review is what really is going to be that impact from heads and beds to, you know, the actual attendee number that they're giving us in the applicant uh, in the applications and whether the money that we're, we're uh, providing uh, would mm -hmm. actually, you know, satisfy and make sense given the the ratio of who's actually attending these events can you can you walk us through as a refresher um the the process the statutory um uh infrastructure um how how the because we're not we're just accepting the 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 proposal and we adopt the proposal i think if we have a big problem with one of the line items we'll raise that but can you How's the, Christine, how's Christine, the board Christine made up? Needs to be back. How's, the, how's the board made up? Who appoints the board? We appoint the board. Appoint this the is board. the ATAX committee. I know. Okay. My, you know, my cup runs full sometimes. So you little, knew that. No, hold on. Because I get this mixed up with what the state one is. Okay, this is ours. So Christina says how much can go towards ATAX committee grants. Right. I know so, it's a dumb question, but not I'm dumb. not afraid to ask it, so I'm asking it. All right, so we like have a um, seven-member committee, which we've actually had a vacancy okay. that we're going to be appointing for tonight. Thank you for this, by the way. Of course. And there are two members from the hospitality industry, two members from the lodging industry, a representative from MAC, a representative from the City of Greenville, and then a city of Greenville at large representative. Okay. All right. Generally, we just do this process once a year. There's a call for applications. The application was opened. I think we opened it before January 1 and we're to um, the beginning of March. Okay. The committee meets. Every applicant has an opportunity to make a presentation. Okay. And then the committee together forms this recommendation. And then um, the city council is able to adjust the number gotcha. if you would if you wish to, okay. and then we report to the state, the Tourism Expenditure Review Committee, all of our awards. Yeah, I was going to say, where does the state statute come into this? Because it's... They review all of our everything from this pot. Okay. We have to report annually. Okay. And there's also a state statute that tells us how much we have to give. Uh, we That's where I'm going with this, because I'm confused a little. But but it's, but it's, on the mandatory versus the discretionary. So, yes. Right. This, is, this is discretionary. Yeah. And then there's a mandatory yeah, one as well. Yeah. She's on See if you can find the budget slide on this. We, we've yeah. got to pull up. So um, visit, visit Greenville gets 30% of the funding. And it's, yeah. it's whatever we actually take. I hope no one minds. I'm trying to tie no, all these two together. That, no, that's fine. So we have our total receipts. And then visit Greenville gets 30%. The city of Greenville gets 25000 plus 5% that we get, the city of Greenville gets. As like an administrative fee, okay. and then the remaining amount is um, has to be spent on specific tourism eligible mm -hmm. projects or events or marketing. So this was the budget for FY twenty four, and the reason we have more money available this year is due to the conservative budgeting we've had for the past two years because gotcha. of COVID. We've sort of built up a little bit of a reserve. Okay. Mm -hmm. But um, that's not expected, you know, to continue. So you got the statutory general fund set aside, then the statutory visit green will set aside, and then we come in with the three point oh five million dollars 
that's at our discretion on what we want to spend it yes. for. Yes. And, yeah. and I will say that committee, if you, if you, it, they've done it now, but if you, if you, they're, first of all, they're open presentations to the public, open uh, debate in the word, what do you call it when y'all are around the discussion, open discussion, discussion, discussion mm -hmm. around the table by the committee. And I, I didn't go this year, but I was very impressed with one, the expertise on the committee in terms of having a finger on the pulse of what yeah. puts head in beds <laughs> and their scrutiny of the applications and discernment. I was just having a hard time. I just was having a tough time fitting it all together between state and what we're doing. And so, thank you. Uh, I, have John, part, so I, understand. Yeah. I have a far less inconsequential question. Um, but back on that thing, it was like the, the runway airport. The runway cafe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they asked for 14678 and we gave them 14500 Was that just because it was easier to round up and round down? You guys okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was the one who literally said, absolutely not. <laughs> They're real yes. pencil sharpeners over there. Yeah, it's yeah. very specific. Have you, have you been? Can you bend? You've been. I have not been. It, oh. is, it is something else. And yeah. we just put and in a new actually, shelter. Yeah, I mean, there. and you've got mini golf. So you should Ken, see the kids. You need to go. Then well, I the thing, go, if you like look at golf. it, from what I look at, they <laughs> made sure nobody got what was in the middle. <laughs> nobody got well. Except, some people got what they asked for. Uh, mm -hmm. Down uh, something, the hen camping thing, except for two or three of them mm -hmm. in the middle there. Not John, there. Can, can we can, can we request a presentation from Visit Greenville to get an ROI on what we're giving them? I'm I'm nervous. We're giving them a ton. And I haven't seen any numbers on what the impact of that funding is. So if if we can get them to come in and tell us how many how many heads are in the sure um, yeah. are in the beds. Well, Dorothy's on the board. I'm on the executive. They report committee. on it. Tara and I are on the board, so, and they yeah. report on that revenue. Well, that'd be, that'd be great. That'd be but it's man. not a public meeting. I mean, it's yeah. for the board. Um, Do they send us the council a written summary? I'm sure Heath would welcome yeah. an opportunity yeah. to come with the board. No, I mean, I mean not, not invitational at all. Yeah. No, I'm just, really yeah, interested in it. What, what are we getting for that? I'm happy to extend an invitation. And, right. and remember, right. our like what we have discretion over is the, I keep saying 560. I don't know what we have in the budget for this year, but th that's a number that we have that's complete discretionary. discretion yeah. over. Mm -hmm. the, the bigger chunk is mandated. Is mandated. Mandated. The three point oh five million. Yep. It does three point oh five that was on that last slide, Christina. Yes. Include this? It yes. can't. Yes. It does. And it, it includes the. No, it's the one point one. So we this was the amount we had started with. Okay, gotcha. Uh, we we dropped it down to two hundred two million seven hundred fifty thousand. Right. Uh, as our baseline, so we kept some in reserve, mm -hmm. and then the fifty thousand was the the contingency that's all, always annually in reserve. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's that's the pool that we looked at. But total for Visit Greenville, if you take 3 million and 50, 1.16, 218, so four, say yeah, 4 million, 500. No, this yeah. isn't all Visit Greenville. This is all uh, the, the Oh, that, okay, Visit Greenville is the their portion amount. of it. So the portion that's Visit Greenville Visit plus. Visit Greenville got the one, two out of that three million. Okay. okay. So that 1.162 number is how those add up to. This is the visit Greenville amount here. Okay. Well, well, plus the small amount. And these, these, yes, these are yeah. indiv individualized you items. Add so that that's $120,000. And, that's 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 and I would also three. like to see a uh, of each of these visit Greenville things. I mean, how many heads are in the beds for independent planners conference? I mean, are, are we getting the value for the money that we're giving them? On those particular items. And those are the items we look at. That's yep. every, that's part of their application. Every application we Perfect. get is about 10 to 12 pages with all that detail. Great. I, I think what I'm hearing is really a theme of the last year, and that is um, there's a lot of a lot of public money, taxpayer money that's going to visit Greenville. And I think I'm hearing a sense of council of it's not that we disagree necessarily <laughs> with that. But we sure would like to get a little more, a little more, uh, 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 what's the right, uh, involvement uh, uh, back and yeah. forth from engagement. this engagement. Thank well, I'll, I'll, I'll add to that. I mean, I, I don't disagree with that, but I think periodically what we have said is agencies, organizations, partners that get routinely seven, 
figures plus. Mm -hmm. We'd like to hear from them about annually, and, and maybe not even seven figures. I mean, I mean, you know, you get five hundred thousand dollars from the city of Greenville mm -hmm. annually. We'd kind of like to see it periodically. And, and and not that Will's going to agree with me on this, but I'm going to piggyback on what you said anyway. And that is, you know, in my mind, more than them just coming and giving a very and doing the dog and pony instead of them just coming and saying, "Here's what we're doing. Thanks a lot." I really would like a good give and take on where exactly this money's going toward and what it's being used for. Not that I not that I have concerns that it's not being used well. I just don't have a good grasp of when someone says, why you're sending 3 million bucks over there? What's that for? Well, I mean, it's, you know, right on the line. I'm a little more, a little more, yeah, a little more engaged. Well, let me ask you this. Are each of these organizations required to give us a summary of what was spent sure. and how it was spent? Yes, I mean, they have to submit documentation before we will reimburse them for any of these items. So they have to submit detailed invoice if it's a reimbursement break, it's a break. Yeah. And what does that what, what does that typically look like, Christina? It, the documentation. That, I don't handle the their reimbursement, so I don't know. Okay. Um, but you know, generally they'll list out, you know, I mean if they if an organization had marketing, they'll they list it out and then they put the receipts behind it okay. when they spend it on. Here's something that I could see being a gray area. So for example, if you scroll up a little bit, uh Let's say um, cancer, where's Cancer Survivors Park? Um, the, I think it's farther up. Yeah. So they've applied, and I don't know if that's for a specific event. Last year it was like for signage. It is for signage again. So okay. this was one thing I was going to mention. So that, that you can't really tie to heads and beds. There are criteria that they have to meet. Okay. And so part of our job as the seven individuals reviewing these applications is to ensure that what they're asking for and what they're going to spend these dollars towards is within the criteria of what their are eligible expenses. So for instance, Cancer Survivors Park last year, they did submit again or previously for signage. We had a good discussion with them trying to understand what that impact looked like. Uh, this year when she came in, she presented again and was much more, I would say, um, particular and specific around where these signs were going, what they're going to do, how they're wayfinding signage or entry. These are specifically for three uh, entries to the park. Mm -hmm. um, so infrastructural costs to parks and recreation is an eligible expense. Mm -hmm. And so the reason why is because it, it adds value to the quality of life for travel and tourism. It gives a reason for Greenville to be marketable for Visit Greenville SC and for other organizations that are promoting the city. So those, yes, those are fixed hard costs that are going towards, you know, maybe some metal letters to put on some brick, but they do have impact to the quality of the experience, which I'm sure the zoo folks could appreciate. Um, so those are the kinds of things that that's what that would uh, fall under. Now, a lot of these, I'll be honest, is marketing and advertising. And for a so specific event. For a specific or event. Um, and the, I would say like, for instance, um, the questions some of y'all had regarding, you know, heads and beds, uh, again, all of these have a very specific number of room nights that they're expected to have. Uh, they, they itemize how many people are coming from out of market versus how many attendees are in market. All of that's in the formal application. Uh, we don't put that into like a spreadsheet format, which maybe that would be a great idea for, next year, but those are all qualifiers for whether or not we feel like the funding that they're requesting is uh, within the parameters. And then the Jeff, they, do they ever have to report in the aftermath? Yeah. Did, yes. did that happen? That's their projections. Yes. yes. They yeah. do report. We have an annual report that they have to submit back to okay. us. That's what I use as my basis for what I send to the tour. And the, you send and what? Towards the state tourism expenditure okay. review committee, I have to detail all of that out, gotcha. and it asks for attendance figures. And, and again, most of these are year-over-year -year events that we we know if they're lying. <laughs> you know, if we yeah. know if that's not the numbers that we're coming in. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, now it's the new applicants that we may be a little bit more specific, asking them, okay, how are you going to? This is your first time doing this event, or if you've not had to report on this. Previously, how would you ensure data and metrics in the future that would make it, you know, make us feel more confident giving you what you're asking for? I hope I'm not making anyone mad by asking this question. 
Um, do we have a policy? Is there, is there a problem in funding religious organizations? If any of the religious oh, no. organizations are going through visit group will let's see. Yeah. So this is top four, and I don't really remember. Yeah, I, I think I asked it a couple of years. They ago. normally have to go through that organization rather than coming directly from, from the city of Greenville per se. Okay. And they technically need to be open to the public. Yeah. Okay. The event has to be open to the public. So yeah, it's like living the homeless witness, for example. And uh, living gallery. Might be some in the community yeah. to say, why are you funding? That's right. Something like that. And they bring hundreds. Yeah. Hundreds. Oh, yeah. They're not from my door. Oh, anyway. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh. Okay. It's just how do we determine? I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, how, how do we determine if somebody actually needs what they're asking for? So they do give us a breakdown of their budget. Mm -hmm. For for the event for, for the like activity, revenues from all this they show things. where their their they show their expenditures, but they also show their revenues where they're funding this because there is a I believe it's a two to one match yes. for certain applicants, and then there's also new applicants could potentially qualify for a one to one. Right. Um, but that is all given in a breakdown as well as far as funding goes. Okay, so we don't have situations where if someone has got cash, you know. Huge cash reserves and the rest of it. Yeah, I'm not aware of how that would work. No, I'm not. I, I wouldn't be privy to the, we do the ask, P and L. Well, we do ask them for their financial statements, mm -hmm. and they're so they're included as part of that. Yeah, and Joe, I, I want to thank you and the committee. I mean, this is not it's, easy it's stuff, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, it, it's. Very impressive what y'all do. So thank well, you. I, I mean, I can't take all the credit. I believe, honestly, you've set on great individuals who all are very yeah. passionate about not only their own businesses and their industry here, but ensuring that you know there is there is solid visibility, representation, and diversity in this group of uh, activities and events. And this is what makes Greenville great. So this is what gives content to visit Greenville SC to promote it externally. Mm -hmm. If we want to be honest, mm -hmm. so I do see there is a non financial element to a lot of what you're seeing here. So my small little two cents would be, don't look at just a dollar figure. Think about what the actual cultural relevance and impact to these activities and events are to Greenville and making it a desirable place to live, work, and visit. And well, you might want to enter the Miss Collegiate USA page. And we have all that data on um, Tara when they report monthly on basically room occupancy for the month, both in the city, in the yes. county, and as a whole. And I, and you can look at our key performance indicators for HTAX, ATAX, and see it is running well ahead of budget, meaning mm -hmm. people are coming here and they're sleeping here yeah. in the hotels. Hotels are happy right now. Mm -hmm. Yep. Way above budget. Much appreciation. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Nice Anything work for the committee. Great job as a Thank spokesman. You. Thank you. Absolutely. Are you still chair? Did they reelect you? Chair. <laughs> yeah. Mary, Mary does a great job. She does. Well, I have to run and leave sure. and run my business. So thank I appreciate you. it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Okay. Right. Thank you so, so much. So when do we vote on this or do we vote on this? What's the timeline? It, it'll just be within the budget. Okay. It's the it's part of the budget approach. Not a separate. Didn't we do a resolution last year, Anna? So I thought we, we did. We've, been, we've only done resolutions if it's out of cycle. So um the amount the extra amount that we have left. Like that contingency? Yes, we, the contingency. We spend a contingency. Uh, we have to yes, do a special yeah. report. I, I yes. swear he was at a city council meeting last year. And we voted. It was probably for the contingency. We had a, we had one contingency application last year. We had the music ha yes. in January. And then I saw there on the regular list. Is that the same music ha? Yes, for okay. next fiscal year. Because these awards are for, you know, our next fiscal year, uh, start July 1 to June 30 of next year. Thank you. All right, we do have uh, a number of executive session items. Please sure. uh, walk us through those. Go ahead and announce those while we're still in open session. You have four items to discuss this afternoon on under Code Section 30-4-70A2, one for negotiations incident to proposed contractual agreement for purchasing property in the West End adjacent to Floor Field, discussion of um, also negotiations incident to proposed contractual agreement related to Augusta Plaza, also adjacent to Floor Field in the West End, 
to receive legal advice covered by attorney client privilege regarding claims on compliance with regulations proposed by the South Carolina Aeronautics Commission and those regulations impact the development surrounding the airport and negotiations incident to propose contractual agreement regarding the disposition of city property in the Unity Park area. Mm -hmm. So moved. Second. 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 All those in favor, please say aye. Aye.